The first thing I want to talk to you is about um, the formation. Um, I've had to ask you, obviously, respectively, because um, two very different bands, two very different, di different cities. But um, first, I guess, um, Faust and the formation of Faust, because it's such a strange story. They were intended almost as this kind of a created group, and they were supposed to be the, the West German Beatles, I think was the idea. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so far, well, that was a, a, just a joke for us, because we would like to get a contract. And uh, it was Polydor that very time, and they lost or they kicked out the Beatles. And we thought, why not remember them again, what silly thing they did. And so we, <laughs> we told them, okay, we become new Beatles. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. We wanted to... to stop the music we listened to before, you know, mm. and wanted to try to make a certain kind of new music. And I guess that's something that you've both had in common is that both Faust and Can use separate, you, first of all, you both operate on a collective basis. It's also shutting yourself away from the music industry, the usual kind of, you know, production line of recording engineers or whatever, but also society, just completely shut, shutting yourself away and just concentrating on just the, the group itself and almost like making music from scratch. And I guess with Can, you didn't come from a rock background at all, a rock or pop back, background at all, did you? There's no blues in, the, in Germany, mm. no cotton fields. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning, I was a, 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 a jazz drummer, so I listened to all these famous old masters like uh, you know, uh, Art Blakey I loved very much. Art Blakey, Max Roach, Elvin Jones. And in the beginning I tried to copy them, but then I found out uh, if you want to become an artist, you cannot copy other artists. It's not possible. Like in painters, if you copy Picasso, it's not, not possible. To, so you have to be original. That's what I tried then, to become original. It doesn't matter if the people like it or, or don't. So I cannot care about that. I have to do what I have to do. Obviously, with the post-war situation, and I suppose the West German pop scene was just flooded with Anglo-American imported music, or just right. West German musicians just doing imitations of, of, of there, that. There form. was a big English influence on German bands. That mm. Most of the, a few, not so many existed, but the, the bands were trying to play English. 
Mm. And that's why Ken always was crit criticized. The people said they will never get that sound. Mm. So they, they didn't know, we, we didn't try, we wanted to be different. Yeah. And how did you feel when you started working with people like David Byrne of Talking Heads and Brian Eno? Did you really feel, because one of the things I think is that the groups, you know, the, the whole, what's called the crap rocks, is that it, its impact was posthumous. It was after it had, after the record had stopped. That's really when people really started to appreciate it. I can't think of many scenes where, where it only gets appreciated after it's mainly finished, and then it has this long, long afterlife. And so I suppose the first of that was it. The people like Talking Heads and that generation, they started appreciating can or will be met met incidentally yeah there was no it, somehow it happened one day yeah. you met uh, you, you meet people like uh, like I met Jochen like it, ha it happens because there's a maybe a resonance between these people so, and they on on some common level There's a real similarity there with, with Can and also other groups is that you don't come to the studio to the recording with pre-recorded songs and then you just record the songs and that's it. You come to the studio and then you begin and then you make music, you sort of jam, you play together and then the result, it's eventually what happens in the editing, isn't it, is then the final product. Is that that's how it was with Can, I suppose, as well? It was never writ written, the yeah. music. Ne never. I mean, there was no single composer in the in the band. It was everything was composed by the in the studio, like in a, in a laboratory. We work together, yeah, and and get some ideas and record it again and again until it develops. In that process, we we thought writing on on paper is is finished. Mm. Now we write on tape. Yeah. But of course, this again, this principle of the collective, um, and as I say, yeah, no furies was one of the important things. You don't want this Anglo-American model where you have the ego, the the guy that's the vocalist, the sort yeah, of the yeah. lead of the song, the big ego up front, whatever, and then the guitarist, and then the drummer is like in the yeah, back line, yeah, yeah. this hierarchy and all this kind of mm. thing. You know, the, the idea is very much you know along the kind of the communal, the collective. That's why we called us in the very beginning group, group yeah. Faust. But then we left the group because the idea was. Just crowd rock, it was called yeah. Cr crowd, well, like <laughs> crowdfunding. Yeah, yes, crowd, crowd, crowdfunding. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned, obviously, you mentioned a word that sometimes is a bit taboo. Um, you know, is the word crowd rock, and I'm just wondering. Obviously, you had a song called Crowd Rock. Obviously, when you heard the word, I understand that um, after I wrote the book, um, the, the Future Days book, I did. Um, get an email from Simon Draper, in fact, who oh. said that it was his idea. He claimed it was his idea. He said it was a marketing thing. He said, look, all these new groups, Amundul, Fouts, Khan, are coming through. We needed to have some sort of category So for the, mute, for the record shops. Mm. So there's a little thing there. So everybody wants to find out about this new... They can just go straight to that. That, that he, he claims that's the idea. Other people say the music journalist invented it or whatever. But it must have been a bit strange when you first heard that term. And, and I don't suppose you were necessarily very pleased with it. Um, 
Yeah, when, when it came from our to side. You yeah, know, we had it wasn't something that you did, it was already, imposed from outside. We, we got invited for, uh, in the BBC to, to play this song, but the BBC couldn't manage to record it live, so we had to, anyway, to play to this, uh, mm. to, the, to the, the soundtrack, finally. And, but the idea behind the sound was, uh, the song or the Stück was just because we often heard about crowds, the crowds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, okay, it's understandable. And we, we thought we are no crowds, we are normal people and we don't play rock. Mm. So both titles together yeah. meant finally crowd rock. Yeah. But it was meant in a not very good way. What did you think when, in the 80s, in Germany, had the, like the Neue Deutsche Welle, as they called it, Einstein and Neubauten and DAF and all those kind of people, who in a way were doing something similar, but not at all similar to what you were doing, that, that was musically very much after punk and everything, yeah. but also but very inventive at the same time, going reinventing yes, they, the idea they were of like, really what the rock song is. Inventive. They used some... Parts of the music we made. They knew, you, for example, the noise, yeah. you know, and uh, sheets and something like that. And yeah. purely, they became really. I think uh, I've hooted up. I, th I think they did it really on the point. You know, they put pulled out something and then mm. they did only this, but with power. 